I'm sure everybody watching this video woke up today, jumped out of bed and said, man, oh man, I can't believe it's Prediction Thursday at Lions Talk Live. So let's talk about it. Let's break down this weekend's upcoming matchup between our beloved Detroit Lions and their hated Chicago Bears. Justin Fields is coming in with an S on his chest. And let's talk about if Detroit's D can prove to be the kryptonite. Let's get into that and maybe just a little bit more in today's Lions Talk Live. Well, greetings and salutations to everybody out there in YouTube land. I'm your host once again, Dan Thornton. This is our prediction video for Lions Talk Live. And I'm sure it's a surprise to nobody out there that the number one priority for the Detroit Lions on D this week isn't to stop a wide receiver. It's not to stop a running back. It's to come after Justin Fields and put the shackles on him, stopping him from running all over the place. Fields, I'm sure as anybody watching this video is aware, is a dual threat quarterback like the Lions haven't seen since week one against Jalen Hurst. Uh, Fields has continued to progress upwards. And in fact, in the last two weeks, I'm sure you're all aware he's averaged uh, just a little bit over 100 on the quarterback rating scale. While he hasn't thrown for a ton of yards, he really hasn't had to because his feet have beaten up teams left and right, including last weekend's historic uh, event against the Miami Dolphins where he put up over 170 yards. Aaron Glenn in media pressers has been a little coy about what the Lions are going to do. Glenn, the much maligned uh, defensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions, said in today's presser that they've been working on a few things since Wednesday and Thursday's uh, practices to try to implement some changes. The only thing he really would address and say is that Aiden Hutchinson could be expected on many passing downs to move inside along with John Kaminsky. You know, I don't think that's big of a, a big shocker to many people as at the start of the season, that is what Glenn referred to as the NASCAR package by having both of those men inside and putting a little bit faster players like Okwara out wide and, you know, somebody else on the opposite side. But as it be as it may, with priority number one on third and long being stopping a running quarterback from running, something the Lions haven't been able to do all season, it's going to be a real test of wills here. If the Lions can contain Justin Fields on the running game and make him one-dimensional, that probably bodes well for us. But while the focus of the D will be to limit Fields' ability to improvise plays and get out and run, let's not forget that against Miami, he was 17 of 28 for over 100 yards with three touchdowns. So not a bad performance there by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, it's better than what Goff did. He averaged just under 80 for a QBR you know, he did have the two TDs, the one pick. You did hear, if you watched last weekend's video after the game, uh, where I kind of lamented Ben Johnson asking uh, Goff to come out of, uh, on the very next play after taking a shot to the head and have to throw that pass. Because, as I'm sure we're all aware, it was the very play after Goff took that shot to the head where he was a little groggy that he threw the pick. So maybe Johnson will learn from it, and maybe Goff will audible to a run if Johnson asked him to pass. Maybe not. But being as it may, if the Lions are able with uh, their defense to make fields one-dimensional, that's going to set us up for a lot more success. As uh, the Bears' passing game, while it hasn't been bad the last week or two, throughout the season has not been great. All right, so we're going to dive into the breakdown of the Bears versus the Lions. Joining us once again to talk about it is Tony Labretto. Labretto, you've got a, a Lions team coming off. A huge win at, against Green Bay in Detroit. Now they're facing Justin Fields, who's become Superman. What do you think the uh, Lions have to do to shut him down? Uh, well, they need to stop him from running. So our, our biggest problem all year is not stopping a mobile quarterback. Right. Uh, I don't know if they don't try to spy or if they try to spy and it doesn't work. Uh but they need to spy, maybe throw a safety, a uh, third safety in instead of having uh, two linebackers at most of the time. Have just Derek Barnes or Rodriguez running around out there and th put a uh, third safety out there right. and maybe have a little more speed and have him spy the quarterback. Someone's got to spy the quarterback right. or at least be aware. Contain, contain, contain. Every time uh, all year long a quarterback is like um, – uh, scrambled for 20 yards on third and 17, like oh, yeah. like Aaron Rodgers. It's because the, the middle of the field is wide open. So we just got to, if we stop fields, we win. 
All right, so obviously you bring up some points about what we've got to do to limit Fields at least his ability to run. Mm -hmm. But Detroit's offense, I mean, we currently have the number 12 in the NFL. We're going to face one of the, not the worst defense in the league, but, you know, someone that's not great. Right. What, what do you feel like we're going to have to do, especially since I'm going to say Josh Reynolds isn't going to play? What do we have to do right. to put up enough points to win? Uh, attack the center of their defense. So they they gave up their best defensive lineman with Quinn, and they gave up their best linebacker, probably their best defensive player overall right. in in Rokon Smith. Uh, really, the only their, their leading tackler right now is a uh, Eddie Jackson. He's a defensive back, right? Which is great because <laughs> because a linebacker or a defensive lineman isn't isn't their leading tackler. So attack the middle of the field, attack the line of scrimmage. We oh, our run game has been improving every week. It's one of the we've got what over a thousand yards already for the first time right. in since the nineties. A long time ago. Right. <laughs> so uh, run up the middle and and hit the middle of the field and. Uh, their defense isn't that great at all. So let's talk, continue about the offense. Uh, about almost a week and a half ago now, Hawkinson gets traded. Mm -hmm. We have two other guys uh, step in, take those minutes. What do you think of our tight end core? You know, Assuming you're right that we're going to be able to run on them, set up mm -hmm. some play action, what do you think of these guys? and Can they expose anything? I, I like, so Brock Wright, he did a great job last year of filling in for Hawk when he got hurt. I thought yep. he did anyway. And uh, the new guy, Mitchell, the rookie, yep. I think he's why we traded Hawkinson. I, I think agree. I think he is uh, athletic. He's a big guy. Uh, he caused first touchdown last weekend. Yep. And I think he's going to do it again this weekend. I, I think he's our up-and-comer. And I think with uh, having having the ability to play more with Hawkinson not being there, I think he's really going to come into his own Probably develop. And, and develop. And next year, he, he's going to be uh, maybe a top 10, or not top 10, maybe 15, top 20 tight end in the league. So uh, keep developing him, and I think we won't miss Hawkinson at all. All right, so the Lions defense, you know, historically bad to now, you know, even though we didn't force a ton of punts or anything like that from Green Bay, we were able to get, the, obviously, the turnovers. We forced a couple fumbles, even though we didn't recover them. What do you think, in particular, their objective should be, you know, as far as what are we willing to give up to Fields? Mm -hmm. What are we going to have to take away from him? Uh, well, I think his uh, he's he's starting to hit Cole Komet, their tight end. He's starting to he's starting to – he's got, like, 19 receptions on the year, but a lot of those have come in the last few weeks. Uh, again, one of our – Many faults on defense is we can't we can't cover a we tight, can't end. Cover the tight end. But I think we take away his, the receivers aren't great. Cla I know Claypool is was a big splash at the trade deadline, but he really since his rookie year hasn't done much in Pittsburgh. That's why they were ready to, willing to get give rid get, get rid of him. Uh, Mooney is decent, mm -hmm. uh, but I think take away Fields's legs and uh, he's not he's not a great quarterback uh, throwing quarterback. <laughs> so. Uh, just take away Komet and take away the running backs because uh, that rookie running, or I don't know if he's a rookie, um, the younger guy, not Montgomery. Right. The <laughs> he he's uh will take care of him too, and take away the running game, force him to throw, and right. that'll be it. All right. So I think we broke down. We got two teams that actually aren't that dissimilar. Fields is going to offer something that we're not great at stopping. You know, the Bears don't have a great defense or offense, but they're kind of balancing offset. It's going to be at their place. Give me your prediction. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Since um, Reynolds isn't playing, I think we're going to see more uh, St. Brown this week. We're going to see more Khalif Raymond again. Uh, let's get both tight ends involved, or not both. I think we have three of them that are actually playing yep. for us right now with, with Zalstra. And, you know, get those guys involved. Get Hopefully Swift – they keep saying he's getting better every week. Get a few it, more reps. If, more if reps. we can get, if he can touch the ball 15, 20 times, I think we have a great chance of winning because I really don't think Chicago's defense can stop us. Uh, and we're kind of re reverse roles, right? So Chicago started out with a bad offense. Now their offense is getting right. better, but their defense is horrible. Our offense was great. Now it's going down, or and, and our defense is starting to come up. So I still think we're going to score a lot of points. So I say let's do 34 to 20, Detroit. All right, so you got 34 20 Detroit. I'm going to I'm going to go with 28 to 24 Detroit winning. I just think, you know, Goff's due for a 
a little bit better game. I think, you know, Swift is going to be somebody they're going to struggle to guard, especially mm -hmm. in the passing game out of the backfield. Uh, Williams and Jackson, I think, are going to dominate on the ground, especially since Chicago has traded their key components to stopping the run, and they're already yeah. bad at stopping the run. Exactly. So that's going to open up some play action. Fields is the great unknown. If if Glenn can limit him, then I, I think we've got a good chance. If Glenn just keeps doing, you know, man across the board press on third and long and letting anybody who comes out of the backfield run like old man Rogers last week, <laughs> it could be a long day for the Lions. Yeah. But, all right, well, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. You got our score predictions. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And, again, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so and leaving a, a thumbs up and a like. I just want to give everyone a shout out. Today is the Marine Corps birthday. So, uh, hi out there to all my devil dog brothers and sisters. I tell you what, uh, my first day of boot camp was 30 years ago yesterday. So, I was in the Marine Corps for six years before I switched over to the Army. So, don't forget, tomorrow also is Veterans Day. So, instead of thanking a veteran, go to a veteran organization and donate some money. Even if it's just a few bucks, it'll help. Thank you. Mm -hmm.